Skylum has a new creative image editing software program coming out called Luminar Neo. I've done a previous couple of videos on it, and we've got a bit more information now, but also there have been some questions that have come up since the announcement. I wanted to see if I could address a few of those. So sit back, relax. This is going to be a little bit of Luminar Neo Q&A. Hi, my name is William Beam. You can find me at williambeam.com. And I'm a photographer just like you. Why don't we go ahead and get into the Q&A about this. And this is just going to be a bit of a slideshow today. I do have some new images that were provided by Skylum to show you. But mostly I just kind of want to address some of the questions that people have been bringing up. All right. The first question is, can I migrate my catalog? The initial answer to this question was no, that the catalogs between Luminar AI and Luminar Neo were incompatible with each other. Skylum heard the feedback about this. It's something that is of a concern to a lot of their customers. So they're going to come out with a catalog migrator. In other words, you're not going to be able to use the same catalog if you use both Luminar AI and Luminar Neo simultaneously. But if you want to do a migration of your Luminar AI catalog over to Luminar Neo, that is something they're building. I don't believe it's going to be available at launch time. I think this is probably something that's going to come out after um, the first of the year. I don't know a specific date. We don't still even have a specific launch date. It's going to be winter, they say. And I'm presuming that's going to be December when Luminar Neo comes out. It will be after the launch time when the catalog migrator comes out. So it's not going to be available to the best of my knowledge, as soon as Luminar Neo comes out, but it is something that they've heard the feedback and they're going to work on. There will be a migration utility to get your catalog from Luminar AI to Luminar Neo. This is one that comes up every once in a while. Does Luminar Neo require a subscription? No. Uh, matter of fact, I don't think, other than the membership, anything that Skyline produces requires a subscription. There is a Luminar X membership subscription that has some uh, benefits to it. There are templates that they put out and other resources, but it's not a required thing in order to use Luminar AI or Luminar Neo. When you buy the software, you have the software and it will operate until it's end of life and the operating system doesn't support it anymore. So if you take a look at that, there have been a number of different Luminar products along the way, and some of them have come to end of life, like Luminar 4. There will be no more updates of Luminar 4. Luminar Neo is actually going to be the successor to Luminar 4. That doesn't mean you can't run Luminar 4 anymore, but as operating systems change, eventually it's going to be outdated. And this is common with any software in the industry. So when you buy Luminar Neo, it'll continue to run. They will provide support for it. There are already plans for updates. And with Luminar AI, when it came out, there have been four major updates, not only with bug fixes, but also new feature enhancements, major tools that came out along with it. So I expect a similar kind of thing with Luminar Neo. So here's the question, is Luminar Neo faster? They're telling us it is, but that in itself doesn't really mean that much to me because every software vendor tells you that its new software is faster. And it really is going to depend on so many variables. What is your computer? What are the minimum requirements? And what kind of load are you putting on it? However, there are a couple of things that they've shared with us recently that tell us why they anticipate that Luminar Neo will be faster. And it comes down to a couple of different methods of doing photo editing, image editing, and they're called sequential rendering and parametric editing. So I'm just going to read off the notes here. Sequential rendering stores modified pixels at every step of the edit. So sequential rendering stores modified pixels at every step. In other words, it's going to change things and write it to disk. So as you go, it's writing, it's writing. And it makes it very difficult to undo things beyond a certain level because as it's writing, it's got to keep a history and you may be limited on your history based on your RAM and how much you can store back there. Parametric editing previews all the changes, but it doesn't apply them until the image is exported. So Lightroom Classic is an example of parametric editing. You're doing all these changes, you see them as they happen, but they're not committed. They're all stored in RAM. Once you apply them, then you're committed and you can do undo your steps easily this way. So there's pros and cons to each method. Luminar Neo renders changes as the edit progresses, but it also has a smart edit history that provides unlimited levels of undo. Basically what they've created with this new engine with Luminar Neo is a bit of a hybrid model. So there's the sequential editing 
and the parametric rendering. So they're trying to make things faster on both ends and also give you infinite levels of undo. And that's why they have a new engine. It's also the answer to one of the upcoming questions. So here's what they're saying is like the approach allows the user to selectively remove and reorder the application of tools. In Luminar AI, you can't do that. Everything that you do gets processed in the order that Luminar AI says. In Luminar Neo, you can process things in the order that you want. So you may want to do your sharpening at one point and then your black and white conversion at another point and apply a lookup table at another point. And creatively, you can't decide that order in Luminar AI. With the new engine in Luminar Neo, you can do that. And that's one of the big changes that affects performance and also your control over your photo or image editing process. Now, here's the, something that they released. I think this is a key thing to keep in mind down the road. It says, Skyline will release new AI-powered tools and effects powered by this new core engine. In other words, I expect that there's going to be new versions of Luminar, part of the Luminar family. They mentioned when they announced Luminar Neo that it was going to be part of the Luminar family with Luminar AI and Luminar Neo. Well, there are other products that have families as well. If you look at Adobe's Photoshop, they use that on probably more than half a dozen different products. You have Photoshop itself, uh, Lightroom is a Photoshop product, Photoshop Touch, and Photoshop Elements. So there's a number of different Photoshop products, and maybe you don't use all of them, but it's part of the branding that they use these things together. And they're not all part of the same core engine. Obviously, Lightroom doesn't use the same engine, doesn't have layers, and is different than Photoshop that does have layers and has other features to it. So some of it is branding, but in this case, they're saying it's going to be part of the new core engine. And that tells me if they're going to have new products released on this, they plan on using this engine and this methodology in other products that we don't even know about today. So there is a roadmap with Luminar that Skylima has in mind that we will learn about as things go on. So why create Luminar Neo? Well, there's been a lot of feedback because people wanted layers. And Skylam has been pretty adamant that Luminar AI would not have layers. I think part of that is because of the way they wrote the engine. And it is basically an image editing software. It's photo editing software. You can tweak things, but it's not designed to be a creative tool. And layers kind of add in that little bit of creativity. I think a lot of us photographers have been trying to use Luminar AI in a way that was beyond it was in its initial intention. And now we're starting to see why. So there is a roadmap and a path, and I don't know the whole roadmap. I hear it as, as you do. But the idea is Luminar AI is just for enhancing your photos. Luminar Neo is for doing more creative things and adding to your photographs and changing things with layers. And we'll show you some examples of that in the photos they've supplied coming up. And so let's take a look at layers in Luminar Neo. Now, I want to share some information that the, they've shared with me, and that is how many layers can you have? It's going to be dependent upon your system. But to kind of set expectations, they're saying for the computer that the average consumer has, they expect about 10 layers. There's not going to be some case where you have 3,000 layers running this program, even if you have a supercomputer. But 10 layers is not an absolute limit. It is dependent upon resources. So if you have a newer computer, you have more RAM, you've got bigger CPU, you can probably get beyond that 10 layer limit. They're trying to set expectations that 10 layers is roughly what the average consumer, based upon the metrics that they see of their consumer base, is going to be able to use. All right, so this is an example that they've sent us. And this user interface that you're seeing here is not the final user interface. As a matter of fact, they're kind of being a little bit cagey with showing their user interface because they're worried that other people are going to be copying what they share. But you can see over on the left side where it says layers, there are different layers that have been added here to the photo that's on the right. You can see there is the image of that little white line. It's almost like a halo effect. There is certainly, you know, the globe that's gone back there and the star field. So you're adding layers to your photos and compositing things in there. They say that there's going to be a smart compositing thing that will recommend or guide you through your compositing steps. I'm looking forward to seeing how that works and what it does. But also if you look on the mock-up of the tools, keep in mind that 
you're not going to use layers alone. You're going to use your different tools and there are going to be new features and new tools that come out with Luminar Neo. Plan on using those in conjunction with things that you already recognize if you've been using Luminar Neo, excuse me, if you've been using Luminar AI. So here's another example again, and it's just showing that with just a few layers, you can really kind of change or enhance a photograph that you have. And then here's one, we've got a black and white image of a, a portrait image on a gray background. There's an easy way to replace the background. You can add in some different image elements. You can see there's also a little bit of depth showing here. You can, some of the things are behind her. If you look down at the flower in front or those, even the clothing, those things are in front of her. So they've kind of added some things in here showing what you can do with the power of your layers. Masking is a big one. I'm, I'm probably looking forward to the masking tools more than I'm looking forward to the layers. What they're going to do is use AI, the artificial intelligence, to allow you to select what you want to mask, and then it's going to automatically select it. Now, you can still go ahead and enhance the selection, but in this case, look at the tool. It says, do you want to mask the sky, the vegetation, the road, the mountains, or the vehicle? So they've selected the road, and the AI has been trained. It says, okay, I know what a road looks like. Let me go ahead and select that. You can still touch that up if you want to, but... Isn't it nice to think I can just tell the tool what I want to select? It recognizes elements in my image, and I can say select this. And then there you've got a nice mask that goes along with it. And maybe you want to darken the road or who knows what else you want to do to it. But if you want to do some selective editing, you're essentially making selections based upon the mask AI, which you can then reuse on other layers and use with different tools. So here's another example where they're masking the sky. This is technology they already have, but now they're presenting it to you in a different way. And look at the trees and the leaves. This is actually pretty good because one of the trickiest things to do is try to mask things inside of those little dappled areas with the branches and twigs and leaves. And here it's done it right off. But it hasn't masked the mountain in the background. It did not mask the, uh, it's calling it a man-made structure. To me, it looks like a tent, but I guess that's what it is. So you've got, choices. Do you want the vegetation, the mountains, the sky? And it's doing that for you automatically. And here's another example where it says, I want to mask that mountain. All right. Portrait background replacement. Note the keyword portrait. They have told us that they expect in the future that this is going to change where there will probably be other subjects that you can replace the background, but as it's shipping, it is portrait background. In other words, they're expecting a human to be there. And you can see some examples here where there's a model standing in front of like some corrugated metal, and then they've just replaced the background. I really love this idea because I've got a lot of background images that I would like to be able to use. I'll shoot somebody on a gray background, and then maybe I want to put, you know, maybe I want to put a building up there, or I've also got canvas textures as photographs that I could use as a replacement. It just makes life much easier. I don't have to go change a lot of backdrops. I can just put everybody on a gray background, take their portraits, and then choose the background I want, and this will easily replace it. So here's another example. So you can tell that this is somebody who was photographed on the left in the original background. This is daylight in front of a building, and there's a lot of junk and clutter in there, but they're keying her out and putting her in a few other places and I'm looking at the color on her face in each of the environments. You can see on the left, there's almost like some green on the tint of her face that would probably come from the vegetation. In the middle one, you can see there's probably something from the neon or lighting at nighttime. I'm curious to see this tool when it comes out to see how that lighting in these backgrounds is going to affect the background replacement and the subject that you're putting in front of it. So here's another example. Again, on the left, you've got your original background, and that is just really, in my opinion, a, an atrocious background for a portrait. But the other two I kind of like. I can see, like, one, you're out and about, and another, you're kind of in a wooded area. There are some possibilities here, particularly when you combine this with some of the other tools that they're uh, providing, like the relighting tools. So let's take a quick look at Relight AI. Now, one of the things I wish I could show you, and I don't have it, is there was a small video showing this in action and how the relighting kind of moved. If you notice, there is some depth to the relighting, and that's because they're using their technology that is aware of the depth. So she is in the foreground. You can see how the wall behind her is progressing off to the back, 
And the tool is aware of that depth as it's creating its mask. So it's not just like a complete black and white. There's like shades of gray in the depth mask so it can determine how the relighting works. And you can see that the tools over here, they're talking about an amount of how much you're going to relight it. D-Halo, if you look around the edge of her hair line, in the example that we were seeing on the video, there was a little bit of a halo that started up over there. So they've got this over at 100% because as they're relighting it, it might change in some scenes and you might have to do a little bit of correction. And that's why the D-Halo tool is there. And the depth will let you move the relighting backwards and forwards in your image. And in particular, this scene, and unfortunately the way they've shown it here doesn't let you see it. We were looking at a demo and on the sides of the walls of the photos for where they had the statue, it was in deep shadow and you could see that shadow line on the side of the walls kind of move back as they were relighting it and moving that slider. And I wish I had that to share with you. But basically what you're seeing here is a chance to relight with a depth awareness. And I think that's going to be a very interesting tool as well. It's going to give us much more realistic and interesting results with our photos. And then here's another example of depth as you're shooting up. You can see how the trees are going up. They're going up into the branches above. And you can see the difference in the lighting, not only up at the top, but also along the tree trunks. So it looks like bamboo, I guess, along those uh, bamboo poles all the way up. And that is an example of the depth awareness that you can kind of change with this. And then here's one last example you can see. It's a much more subtle look. But again, you can tell that there's depth going from the foreground to the middle to the background. Luminar Neo ships this winter is going to include layers, relight AI, and other tools that are going to be interesting. A lot of the stuff that we have in Luminar AI is going to be there. There are other tools that are going to be forthcoming in an update. So portrait background, removal AI, and mask AI are scheduled for the release in the first quarter of 2022. This is similar to what happened with Luminar AI. It came out with your product, and then there were releases with new tools that we knew about before uh, the product came out, and the same thing is happening here. So if you get your product and it says, where are all the other things they talked about? Well, they're forthcoming. So mask AI, removal AI, the portrait background, those things are going to be coming in the first quarter. Is the early bird pricing still active? I'm recording this on Sunday just after noon. I looked this morning about 1130. There were 149 copies left for sale at the early, early bird pricing. My guess is by the time this comes out on Monday, probably none of those copies are going to be available. But will Skylum have other promotions? I am positive that Skylum will have other promotions. They may not be quite as cheap as the initial early bird pricing. In fact, I should be able to guarantee you that because they said the early bird pricing is the best pricing you'll be able to get. And the people who bought the 30,000 customers who bought the early bird pricing will get their software a little bit earlier than what the um, general availability is. But there will still be discounts. And do I have a promo code? Why? Yes, I do. It is my last name, Beam. That promo code is good for different Skyline products. It is a $10 discount. When the early bird pricing ends, I don't know if they're going to immediately launch into another promotion or not. But I would suggest where there's a field for a promo code, try putting in my promo code to see if it will give you a $10 discount if you're interested in purchasing this. And there's no extra cost to you to use my promo code. It does give me a small commission, which helps me keep the lights on here. If you purchase Luminar Neo using my coupon code or my affiliate link, you get my course for free. I don't have the software yet. When I do, I'm going to do the same thing I did with Luminar AI. I'm going to build a course showing you how to use all of the tools inside of Luminar Neo, different circumstances, basically everything you need to know. It's good for a tutorial, and it's also good to use as a reference later on. If you haven't used something in a while, you can go back and just watch the lesson that you need to. So I'm going to have that as a bonus gift for anybody who buys using my promo code or referral link. So there's the free course I just mentioned. Apparently I'm not good at keeping my slides up with what I'm talking about. And this is my affiliate code link. If you buy through that, send me a copy of your receipt 
And if you just go to the williambeam.com slash contact, there's a page right there. You can just uh, contact me right there and let me know what you've got to say. And basically, here's what happens. For the folks who've purchased using the early bird, my promo code isn't in there because it didn't work. I've simply asked them for their order number, which I will go back to Skylab and say, can you please verify these folks? And when they do, then I add them to the course. Before that, with Luminar AI, and typically what I do is I ask for the receipt because my coupon code BEAM shows up on the receipt itself. And that saves a little bit of time. I don't have to hassle with uh, Skylum. Not that it's a hassle, but it's just like it's, it's a delay. I've got to ask somebody else to do me a favor so I can make sure that I provide you with your code. So if you use my promo code, please just send me a copy of the receipt. And at the very least, give me your order number if you don't want to send the receipt. And I can use that to validate with Skylum. And there's always somebody who will try to send something through and get the, co- the course for free with who didn't purchase from me. And that never works. But if you did purchase from me, I'm happy to give you the course and, of course, any other kind of help that I can. So that's all I know right now about what's coming up with Luminar Neo. There will be more information forthcoming because Skylum has promised that they will tell us more things. And when they do, I'll share that with you. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope it was helpful to you. If you like this video, please go ahead, click the like button. That tells the YouTube overlords that they should share this with more people. They'll see it and hopefully will help some other folks as well too. Thank you so much. I'll see you again in the next video.